This is the A Minute to Midnight show. Welcome. Today, this is Tony. And Brooke. And Joni. And it's great to have the three of us together. We've got a pretty important show today, and uh, I will throw it to Brooke and Joni to explain why. Okay, Tony. I guess I'll start with how it began. We're actually talking about um, a an open vision, a vision that Jose Polanco's nephew had. Um, first, he messaged he messaged Joni and I about something really extraordinary that happened in his life concerning his nephew one evening, and he asked me if he could send it the audio of it to to me because he actually grabbed his phone and audio recorded this. And I said, of course. And he asked, I knew he had sent it, tried, he was going to send it to Joni and he wanted to keep it between the minute to midnight team, the few of us, because it, it's just, it's very real. It's very raw. It's very personal to Jose. This is his 15-year-old, 16-year-old nephew, you have to understand, who was unsaved at the time of this. So he he sent it to me, and um, I began to listen to it. There's hardly really any words to explain it other than that there's a holy, reverent fear about it, basically. I, I didn't have any words. I called Joni. She had not received it yet. She couldn't. We were having trouble. I tried several different ways to send it. And I was basically stuck with it all day long, pondering upon it. Because when you listen to this, you cannot go about your day thinking about anything else. It gets deep inside your your spirit, your soul, every emotion. Uh, When he explains everything, you can feel what he's feeling and you can see what he's seeing if you just close your eyes and um Joni finally received it and and she called me of course and um I'm gonna let her discuss her feeling about it but basically I remember her saying I don't even want to touch this it, it's it's I don't even want to touch this there's no words we couldn't have a conversation about it we didn't have the words. I'm going to let her discuss, um, you know, how she felt about it. And then we can, what I can do is read a little bit. Uh, we had Jose write an intro because we did write an article and we transcribed this that we will release with the audio. So people can either read it after or print it out or have people understanding it. They can follow along with it. And, um, and then we'll go from there. Well, when I finally got a chance to listen to it, I have to say I sat down, I listened to every bit of it, and I have to be honest that I have to say I had never heard anything like that before in my entire life. And the most compelling, penetrating aspect of the whole thing is this young man was unsaved. Now, I know his family had been praying for him to be saved, but he was resistant to being saved. And it was interesting uh, in, in the regard that it was compelling is the Lord chose this 16 year old young man to convey a message. Now this message, uh, it's, it's, it's almost like Brooke was saying, it's very difficult to talk about. It's so, I, it's, it, it's like, I think it invokes fear and trembling. Mm-hmm. And I don't just say that lightly because a lot of people like to take Bible words and throw them around loosely. But truly, I couldn't even speak. I couldn't even talk about it. Brooke and I, I, I called her and I said, I don't even know what to, mm-hmm. I can't even talk to you right now. I couldn't even speak about it for days. And we we want to say this, that it was very difficult for us to really come on and talk about it because the vision and the prophecy speak for itself. I mean, if, if anything, 
when I was listening to it, I thought this is like this is like something that you read out of the Bible. I have never experienced something like that before in my entire life. It was 3D. Mm -hmm. Um, He was getting it in waves. Um, He was seeing detailed things like a movie in in front of him. Now, we're not going to let out what we saw. You're going to have to listen to it. The people are going to listen to it themselves. But I know that Brooke, you know, she's sitting here with me right now. Even before we came on today, we were just like, we don't even know what to say about it. It's it's something, you know, it's it's really a holy thing. And we, again, we say that sensitively. We want to be sensitive mm-hmm. with this vision. I think above any vision, I feel as far as it's come through mm-hmm. to minute to midnight. Mm-hmm. We don't want to say too much before we put this out. We don't want it to be anyone focusing on this, on our words. What I will say before I read, what I'll do is I'll read a little bit of what Jose has to say in his introduction that we asked him to write. But basically, as Joni said, remember this little, this young man is unsaved. And what you're about to hear, all I'll say is it's the book of Revelation unfolding before a 16 year old unsaved boy's eyes and he was horrified really at the sight because he was not saved but people if you know the bible and you know what's in the book and what will happen now he knows you know he doesn't have to be to fear it but just imagine if it was your child or your relative that was seeing this in real time and, and and I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm going to read a little bit of Jose's introduction here, and then I'll give it back to Tony, and we'll go from there. What Jose says is this. What you are about to read is one of the most extraordinary experiences that I, Jose Polanco, have ever encountered in my Christian life. Not a dream, not a sci-fi movie, not even a story out of a book. This was a real, raw, live experience of my 16-year-old nephew having visions in real time while he sat right before my eyes. Um, This began in May of 2016. Around May 20th, my wife and I were completely exhausted. We decided to go to bed early that night, and it didn't take us long before we were both sound asleep. Suddenly, at 11 p.m., I heard the distant sound of someone knocking very desperately on the front door. To my surprise, it was my sister accompanied by my nephew. He was in a state of shock and clearly crying as tears streamed down his face. She explained that he was having visions in real time and she did not know what to do with him. I took him into the bedroom, cast everyone out, locked the door for privacy. He goes on to explain a little bit more, but he ends in saying this, the depth of his vision were so were deeply extraordinary as he was looking upon things that i understand will happen during the tribulation period as prophesied in the book of revelation and tony we're going to leave it at that and i'm going to give it back to you and we're just going to let all the listeners um marinate in what they're about to hear that they have probably as well never experienced before just just as us i i will add that when i heard the vision myself it was so profound it's like oh my gosh you just cannot get it out of your head it's one of those ones that probably stick with you for the rest of your life that's extraordinary listen were you sleeping were you awake Okay, so you were watching TV? I was just staring at the clock. You were just staring at the clock? Okay. <laughs> and what happened? As soon as it went to 12. Say that again? As soon as it went to 12, uh-huh. I started seeing a lot of like. <laughs> Horrible things. Do 
people what they did to each other to survive. I saw a lot of fire, a lot of blood, a lot of dried blood, but a lot of crimson blood. Okay. You were wide and, awake. Yes. It all hit me all of a sudden. People are crazy. Average people just... What you would think would be someone average would just come in. <laughs> they turn crazy. They they like start committing cannibalism, <laughs> and they would like offer to. They'd make human offerings to. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay, buddy. <laughs> you good. <laughs> how, how long you saw that for? I'm still seeing it. <laughs> I still see it. Okay, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, Papa. You want to know what's going on? Huh? 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 You know what we've been talking about? What I've been talking about with your mama for a very long time? Or God. It's greater than a war. It's. <laughs> I know, Papi. Listen to me, baby. And there's gonna be something worse after the war. There's not gonna be anyone that's gonna win. People will claim victory, but it's not gonna be victory. It's not gonna be for fighting for good or bad. It's just gonna be killing. Just to kill. People are just going to start killing to kill. Not even to survive. They're just going to kill. For the satisfaction of killing. Like a sport. But see. God is allowing you to see the future, puppy. Because he wants you to understand that. That he is real. That everything that. That. We've been saying for a very long time is real. And God is real. He is a God of love, but he is also a God of judgment. <laughs> and what he does is he wants when you when you look at the watch, right? You saw it twelve o'clock, you said, and then after that everything turns bad, <laughs> right? See what it is is that in in God's timing, okay? Uh, have you ever read where he says that that he will come like a thief in the middle of the night or a thief at midnight? That means when God's time clock goes to 12, he will get his bride. Oh. But listen to me, baby. It's so true. It's so true, yes. I've always doubted. I've always doubted my whole life. Oh. Babe, but listen to me. Hey, listen to me, baby. He's not... Listen to me. Even if you doubt it, we all doubt at one point. But listen to me. God is real, regardless of who believes in Him or not. The only thing that we need to do is to be... To be close to him. Just ask him for for him to, to forgive our sins. Because when that time clock reaches 12 o'clock, papi, there is nothing that you and I or anybody could do. It that's that is long gone history. Do you understand? He he's not allowing you to see this because he wants you to be afraid. He wants you to be drawn I'm near not, to him. I'm not afraid. I know. I'm crying for them. 
I'm crying for them. For the whore. A friend is the last thing I am. I'm ready to do whatever I need to do. But and the things I say, the things I still am saying, it's so horrible. I don't understand why how a man, a woman, kids could do such horrors. How could what was simple living could so in such a little time turn into such a horrors? It's not. But see, do you know how the, the problem that that we all have is that at one point we allowed God out of this nation, and once He has, He has completely like people have pushed Him out of the way, like whoa, well, we don't want you here. We want the same say. We we want the right for everything, you know, not giving the fair chance of honor God in our of our ways. So he had no choice just to to leave man doing whatever is it that they're doing. So he's allowing you so you can see what's coming ahead. So you can be witness to other people, so you can get right with God. So you can actually, you know, do right for yourself, for your family, for others. The Bible says that our thoughts are not his thoughts, and our ways are not his ways. That's why people don't understand. People don't get this. This is not, this is a spiritual war warfare. You Beware see, the Catholic. Huh? Beware the Catholics. Beware of the Catholics? Why? The first word will come from them. Oh, wow. What do you mean by that, puppy? <laughs> the first word of war will come from them. Okay. <laughs> they will claim it's peace, <laughs> but it's just corruption. I know. <laughs> You're fine. Oh. oh my gosh, puppy. <laughs> it's all corruption. It's okay, I know. <laughs> you remember how we're getting ready to, to leave Florida? Do you see why we're making backpacks, emergency backpacks, and how we're getting things done so we're we can leave? We're going to need a lot more than just food. I know, Papi, but we can only do what we can do. Remember. So we're packing up food. We're gathering the things that we need. Because, see, remember, the only thing that matters here is for you to be right with God. Because once you're in the safe zone with God, then he will take us. Do you understand? He's showing you what you're seeing because he does not want to leave us behind. That's all it is to it. It's, this is not about us. This is about us helping other people to get safe and understand the meaning of what true the true God and the true love of God is because he so loved the world that one day he sent his begotten son for, for us to be saved. And yet we pretend to know everything. We pretend that we got things figured out. But men's, uh, men don't have a clue of anything. Oh, no, they don't have a clue at all. We're going to make an advancement. That's not going to be good either with the nukes. Uh, uh, it's going to be a, a run for, for power of nukes. 
They're gonna run for TC was the biggest and baddest weapon. They're gonna be running for the nukes. It's gonna <laughs> Oh. You okay? You okay, Papa? You still seeing anything? What do you see? More that. More that. They're going after the churches. Not just the churches, they're going for after people that believe in God. They're going They'll slaughter them mm -hmm. as slowly and painfully. They're gonna prolong their deaths to the fullest extent. And there's a man watching and smiling while it all happens. And there's another man right next to him that's shorter. <laughs> They're both shadows. They're both shadows. They're watching it all happen. The vision stops. You want to pray? Not now. Not now? Okay. The volcanoes, a lot of them, are going to erupt the ring of fire. Because I see a deformed circle goes from Japan to like California, whole area. Mm -hmm. All that's gonna erupt. And then from there, there's gonna be new land formation, but it's not, it's not land, it's, 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 Lava that's been molten. There's going to be so much of it. So much lava is going to be pouring out. <clears throat> You've seen a lot, puppy. People are going to die a lot and they're going to be sacrificing humans and animals to it. And it's not going to make it better. It's going to drive people insane. And then they'll just accept it and start going crazy like I was looking earlier. It will stop eventually. But it's just going to get worse from there. People are going to keep getting crazier and start going for the sane. And from there, loot them, kill them, make tribes. And they're all savages. Ruled by no rule. There's no rules. <laughs> they're going to be tearing up animals alive and eat them from there I'm seeing it goats sheep cats dogs cows they're not gonna hurt them they're just gonna straight up see they see it and it's food it's alive it's moving it's food it won't matter what it is cannibalism will be common it won't be something weird for them if they need to resort to it. They'll just go. They'll just go and do it. Ugh. America's not gonna have it good. America's gonna be mainly made out of savages. And Asia is like all that whole area. They're gonna be 
hell worshippers of some sort are going to be worshipping something, but it's not God. You mean in Asia? The whole area, Chinese, Asia, Japanese, they're going to be worshipping to their to their own gods. Mm -hmm. But they're not like hieroglyphic. They're going to be like real. They look real as if they were right there. <laughs> and they're not going to have their skin. It's different colors. It's going to look it's like their statues only come to life. <laughs> some of them are small, some of them are human size, and some of them are giants. That's all. That's all. You see anything for America that you can remember? Savagery. And chaos. It's just savagery and chaos. There's not going to be no worshipping here. It's all going to be based on materialism. What we can have, what we can hold, and how can we can survive. And over there, they're going to mainly rely on their gods. That's all.